Hello everyone, welcome to Writing Quest. My name is Brendan Pugh. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use the outline feature in my Notion template storybook, Master Novelist. We're gonna go through the outlining your overall story and we're gonna look at outlining chapters. Make sure to stay till the end and I'll show you how to actually modify the outline feature to fit basically any story structure that you want. Huzzah! Okay, so we are in Storybook Master Novelist. If you've seen my videos on some of this before, uh, we'll just kind of walk through it real quick. It's built as a workflow. So we have the dashboard, brainstorm, outline, world building, and writing sections. And essentially what you do is wherever you move your projects throughout this status board here, you that determines where your project shows up in the template and that's what you're working on. So it's basically designed to take something from, I have an idea, I'm gonna brainstorm that idea, you move into a synopsis, the outline, chapter outline, writing, editing, so on and so forth being done. So that's where we're at with this. This is the dashboard view with a couple of things and we'll go through that at a later time. But today we're gonna to talk about the outline view. So if you notice on the status board, we have outline and chapter outline. So when you put a project in either one of those areas, that's gonna determine where it shows up in the outline section. So if we come up here to our top menu bar, which if you have used this or have looked at this before, the that this menu bar is on every single page, whether you go into a project, into a series, into a chapter, wherever you go, this menu bar is here for the easy, easy navigation. So we're going to go to the outline section and we're going to come into here. So currently we have nothing in the outline group here. We have something in the chapter outline, but we'll get there later. So we do not have anything in the current this outline. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to there's two ways to do it. You can go back to dashboard and you can move it here. So you can just take this and you can drag it over. And then if you go back to the outline section, it will show up here momentarily. So there it is. And then if you move it out of this, say, if you move this into back to the idea or whatever, it'll disappear. If you want, if you're on the outline section, so we're in the outlining section here, and you just scroll down to the very bottom, we also have everything here, project status. So you can just click here, move it to sorry, move it to outline, and then it will show back up in your outline section, in your story structure section. So the story structures, when I originally built this, I built this for the three act story structure. So you have th three different views, act one, act two, act three. When you're in act one, you're just working through the parts of act one. So say your project and what status it is. And then you just have a few text boxes here, the hook, inciting incident, the build up, first plot point, first pinch point. These are just text boxes. And so you can just type in them as whatever you want. This is the hook and something happens. And you can type these, you can make this as long as you want to. You can just keep typing it down. It'll keep going. And then you just fill that out. Then when you're done with that, or, you know, you don't have to do this in this exact order, but you can, um, you go into act two, and then you have the same thing. You have project, and then you have four text boxes, pre midpoint reactionary hero, game changing midpoint, post midpoint reactionary hero, second pinch point. That's your act two. Then if you come over to act three, you have all of the things that lead into act three, and you can just fill that out. Now what's really cool is you can kind of jump around if you know what you want your game changing midpoint to be, you can do that and work backwards. Um, if you go into the project, if you go into the project by opening it, it'll come up in side peak and then it's all in order down here. So hook and sighting incident build up. So as you type things, it'll all show up here. So if you're say working in act two, but you need to reference something in act one, you can pull up the project in this side view and you can see all of your plot points here, as well as a bunch of other information such as who your main characters are, um, all that kind of stuff, everything going on here. So it's pretty, pretty nice, pretty useful. And um, yeah, it's pretty great. So if you want to close that, just close it out here. That's pretty much how the story structure part works. And so once you're done with that, you filled out all these things, you're happy with it. What you can do is then click on the status, go back to act one, click status, and you move it to chapter outline. It's going to kick it out of the story structure part, and it's going to move you down into the chapter outline section. So what that does is it's going to do two things. It's going to give you this part where the completed outline is in this full outline reference section. So project one is now here. You have all of your ideas and notes that you wrote down before, 
and then you have the synopsis. And then if you just keep scrolling, you have the entire, whatever you typed in all of this, you have the entire outline right on top. I will say this this is really nice to use on a slightly bigger screen so that you can really see a lot of it. Okay, so this is where your completed outline is. So when you come to the chapter outline, you got brainstorm and outline. In the brainstorm section, so because we change databases, so this is the project database and this is the chapter database, it's different. So you're going to click down here on add a group and it will show up here or show up in a list or you can search it. But for the most part, it's probably going to show up at the top if you were just working on it. So we're going to click project one. It's going to pop it in here and this is where in brainstorm you just start kind of brainstorming your kind of metadata and ideas for the chapter and you kind of start outlining the chapter you outline you know so if i've got um the hook and i read this hook and i've got a few things say i i determined that that hook needs to be uh three chapters it's probably broken up into three chapters so i'm going to do chapter one chapter two and i'm hitting if you hit enter it'll type in the field if you hit shift enter it'll add a new line a little pro tip for you chapter three so i've determined that this part of the story is this hook part is three chapters uh, it gives me this status of brainstorming because i'm in the brainstorming section i'll show you what that is in a second and then since i think it's in the hook i'm going to do this i'm going to label each one as the hook now this part, next part is pretty important. Um, if you haven't already created a manuscript for this project, you can do that. So here, or if you already created one, then you can create a new, or you can attach it to that manuscript. So I don't think we have, well, we do have one for this. So we're going to click project one. We're going to attach these chapters to the project. And that'll be very important later because um, that's in a different database as well. So you can start putting out any ideas and notes you have for this chapter, maybe have a, t a name for it. So you can actually do like, this is um, the character wakes up or something generic or whatever it is. And then you can start doing your ideas and notes for this. Obviously you have your project ideas and notes up here. You have your synopsis and all that stuff. So you can start out putting in your ideas and notes for the chapter. And then you can start filling in a lot of your metadata. So if you come in here, you're like, the POV character for this is going to be character one. Supporting characters in this are going to be two, three, and five. Um, it's going to be set in this region, region number one. And if you create something here, so say we delete that, we're going to do region three. That's where the story starts. We're going to do new region, and it will create that in our world building section. So anything you create in these tabs, if you create something new, it's going to show up in the world building section for you to mess around with later and work on later. If you create something or if you just want to attach something you already created, it's right there. One of the great things about, I think, this template is that no matter where you are in the process, if you add something in, you can always go back and it kind of gathers everything where you need it to be so you can look at it when you need to. Cities and towns, and you just fill all this out. Any kind of metadata for like if there's any items in the scene. And this is really helpful for, I, I especially when I write, sometimes I lose track of a lot of those details. I'm like, oh, is this sword in this scene? Or is it in this town or that town? Or are they going to this place? Or, oh, what buildings are in this town? I kind of forgot. Oh, we want to go to this one. So it just kind of gives you a great way to kind of see and connect all of your different pieces. And then when you go into the world building section too, if you pull up these characters, Characters or regions or whatever, it's going to give you a list of every single scene, chapter, book, project, anything that it's in, there it's going to show you where that character shows up and where it shows up in that story, which is really, really useful. It gives you the kind of this great kind of timeline view of your story. Then once you're done, so you do this for all of your things, um, and obviously you can do this out of order, like you don't have to do all three of these chapters at once or whatever. You can just do the one chapter, move it into the outline etc. So when we're done with this, you filled everything out just how you like it. You click on the brainstorming and you move this into the outlining. And so it's going to disappear from here. It's going to show up here. So we've got chapter one, the character wakes up, outlining, and it shows us it's in story structure for the hook. And all that this is, this is very similar to this up here. And this is why it's really great to have this reference here, is that now you can Basically, this is this is I got this idea from Abby Emmons. It's her scene cards that she 
always promotes. And I just really, when I saw it, I really liked it. It really um, just really broke down scenes really well for me. And so I've adopted it into this. Think of this as kind of like a note card for your chapter. So you're going to write the setup, what's the beginning of the scene, the tension, the crossroad, the decision, the outcome, and then finally the new question that all of that action gives you. What I really like about this setup, and I will do a video about this at another time, but I like about the setup is that it really gives all of your chapters and scenes a really good forward from momentum. And so really love that. When you're done with this, you can kick it out into the writing stage. So it disappears. So you're going to brainstorm, outline, and then you kick it out into the writing stage. What's really cool about it is, again, just like your projects, it works you through this workflow of start here, start small, work through everything, and then get to where you're at, where you're actually able to write the project. We also have this little kind of reference here on the side that's similar. If you need to reference something from a different book, you've got them here. So this kind of shows any project you have. So if you have them in various stages of outlining or something, but you're working on one book and you want to potentially show up in another, you click the side peek and it gives you notes for other projects and things in case you need them. Like if you're trying to really make sure your stuff is connected really well, if you click over into a different view and go to chapter reference. So like if you're working on, say you're working on chapter in the end and it's like chapter 27, but you want to go back and reference a different chapter, say you want to reference chapter one or whatever, you click on here and it'll show you whatever you need to show you. And it'll break it up by project. So like I'm project one. So it shows my chapters here. So if I'm working on chapter two, but I want to see chapter one, I can click on that and it will give me my info from chapter one so that I can reference it for chapter two. It's a really great way to work and I really, really enjoy it. You can also come down here on some of your world building stuff if you need to look at a certain world or a region, city, town. Like if you're wanting to look at a different character you might have because you're working on a character and you need some information from a different character, you can pull that up inside peak two. And so when you work on something in this chapter, you can kind of reference that character for eye color or whatever you need. So lots of ways to reference your data. That's the whole point of all this stuff. And I'm really excited about it. And then when you kick it over into the writing section, I'll just show you very briefly when you come over to write and you have project one here, if you click on project one, this is your manuscript that you we created. And so it's going to show us series one, project one, chapter character wakes up. So we, remember, this is all the stuff that we've connected. It's got it pulls in all the data from everything you've done from what you've written for your series synopsis and project and all your ideas and notes. These are just roll up functions. So whatever you put in the template in a different place, it's going to just show up here. You can't actually edit it here. And then if you come over here where the writing stuff is for the manuscript, your chapter data and your book outline data is all right here. So anything that you did in the outline section, you can pull this up. And again, this is definitely better on a bigger screen, but for purposes of this video, I kind of shrunk it so you could see it. Outline, Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. And it'll show you everything that you wrote. So you have all of your notes from the outline as you're writing. And then you also have your chapter data. This is so as you're writing chapter one, you can pull up chapter one and you can see the setup tension crossroads, all the things that you decided right there. If you click on it, it opens it up so you can see a little bit more so you can see more of the characters. So again, it's like you can have all of your data right next to you as you write your story from everything that you created. And it just automatically collects it all for you from based on what you did in the rest of the template. And you can troll them down if you don't want to see them, whatever you want to do. Um, but anyways, I think it's really great and I really, really like it. So that is how you use the outline feature. Let's, let me show you a quick little tip, as I promised in the beginning, on how to modify this. So some people don't like using the 3x story structure. They'd rather use something else. So all you have to do for that is go in here to Act 1. So let's move this project back into Outline so we can show it here. All you have to do is modify the names of these text fields. So if you want this to be Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, leave it like this. If you want it to be like the Dan Harmon story circle or whatever, you can just turn this into Dan Harmon story circle like that. And then you just change the names of these. So this is like 
zone of comfort and it'll change it everywhere else in the template. I've already messed with that a little bit, so it's not going to let me do it. But yeah, you just move it around. You just change it to whatever you want it to be. If you want to keep some of this, so like we'll go back, we'll leave this like this. You can just create a new view as the Dan Harmon story circle. Let's say, well, let's do um, just act four. Say you want to do an act four, like you're working on a different type of thing. Change act four. You can hide all of this stuff and then create new text boxes for whatever the beats of this are. Or if you want to change up what's in these views, you can you can pick different, you know, you can move them around whatever you need to do by making different views show up in this view. So, or if you want to create a new one, click the little plus button, go down to text, new story beat, and it shows up there. So anything you do in this is going to make it pop up in other areas. If you want it to show down here in this full outline reference, you're going to have to add that in as well um, by just going to the end of it and adding in your new field. So new story beat, add that in, and now you can see it. You can drag stuff around, move it wherever you want. You can delete it whatever you want to do. So that's a really quick way to modify this for whatever story structure you want to do. And again, like I said, it will update it everywhere. So if I click on this, um, I already had zone of comfort in there. That's going to show up down here. And so if you change any of these, if I change this one here, if I rename this, this is zone, do that. If I come back here over to act one, now it's renamed. So everything stays in sync. If I change it here, same thing, changes it over here. And that's how you use the outline and the chapter outline features of Storybook Master Novelist. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope this video was helpful to you. I really think Storybook Master Novelist is a really great way for writers to organize their thoughts and put things together. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, like this video, all that kind of stuff. I'd love to chat with you down in the comments. And if you're interested in getting a copy of Storybook Master Novelist for Notion, you can check the link in the description. And if you use the code WQ15, you'll get 15% off the price of purchase. Thank you so much for watching this episode, and we'll see you next time on Writing Quest. Huzzah!